um, you really can't appreciate whole body insulin resistance without appreciating the origins of it, which I believe are very firmly at the fat cell. There are, you know, every tissue has some, is responsive to insulin. And as it becomes insulin resistant or not would contribute to whole body insulin resistance. But in your case, we have a guy whose fasting insulin levels are good. My counter would be what were your insulin levels throughout the day when you aren't fasted? You know, that's where I think we, uh, we have to appreciate this. And that's where so many people have the problem where we have such a culture of carbohydrate heavy foods and eating so frequently that the average individual, certainly when Drew and Ben are on vacation, spends almost every waking moment in a state of elevated insulin. And it, we're still insulin sensitive enough that after a 12 hour fast, our insulin comes down. But what happens in those other 12 hours during the day or more than 12 hours, depending on what we eat before we go to bed, when our insulin is elevated, that is how we can gain weight and yet still have a nice fasted insulin number again, when we are fasted. But the net effect, there was a paper published in humans that had people overeat carbohydrates for seven days. So it was a high carbohydrate diet for seven days. And at the end of the seven days, the fasted insulin was two and a half times higher. So I would say the bill comes due that, that, you know, maybe that you or I, in your case, you, cause you were measuring your fasted insulin so readily, it wasn't enough to actually start promoting a more lingering insulin resistance, but we know it happens. This just in, in the short as one week, the fasted insulin went from around five microunits per mil up to high teens in these people, um, again, in a fasted state. And, and that just means in that case, even when you are fasted, you have gone into the realm of what um, scientists at University of Pittsburgh identified years ago called metabolic inflexibility where you, which is basically just your insulin resistant in your body now is having a hard time shifting to fat burning, even when you're fasted, even when you should have gone to fat burning, you know, the body's a hybrid burning glucose or fats primarily. And insulin is the switch that determines which fuel the body's using. And so that is again, when fat gain would start to amplify where you're not only gaining fat during the day, but you're potentially not turning to fat burning during the night um, when you should be which would be helping with some degree of fat loss, uh, you know, you're still potentially storing fat even when the body wants to be burning it. When I did my postdoctoral work in Singapore, one of the reasons Singapore was so interested in partnering with Duke University, which is where I was, um, was to understand these ethnic differences on how you can take ethnicities, particularly in Singapore, with both Chinese, um, South Asian, Malaysian, and European, and you have these four different guys who are best drinking buddies and they're all gaining weight. And yet they start to suffer the consequences of that weight gain at very different rates. But a study done in Caucasians compared to South Asians, not only do we know that the average South Asian Indian has a fasted insulin that is more than double what the, his Caucasian counterpart is, but also even at the same body weight, his fat cells are about three to four times larger than his Caucasian counterpart. And there, so there are these, and, and this could explain why partly India has more people with type 2 diabetes. Um, absolute numbers more than anyone, but of course India's population is so massive. Even per capita, it's approaching the number one spot in the world, being truly the diabetes capital of the world. And a part of it is this combination, yes, environment, diet matters, but also genetics.